Good morning. Welcome to New Beginnings. Good morning, friends, and welcome to New Beginnings Worship. My name is Pastor Neil Platon, and I welcome you to the downtown campus. We hope you find what you seek in this time of worship. As we gather our hearts and our minds for worship, reflect on these words. We gather before the God of the open road, the God of the twisting path, the God of the narrow and the upward way. We gather our hearts in this hour that our God may give us provisions for the journey, courage and faith and compassion and endurance to face life's difficulties. May our eyes be open to see God walking beside us, protecting us, encouraging us, and loving us. To this end, let us worship God. Please join me in the responsive call to worship. We gather as a community of compassion and hope. Jesus calls us to care for each other tenderly and willingly. By this caring and sharing, we will be known as followers of Jesus. By our example, others may be led to lives of peace. Lord, open our hearts and minds this day to your word. Teach us to serve you with all our gifts and talents. Amen.
please let us join together in our opening prayer. Lord of summer sunshine and autumn harvest, be with us this day as we gather to encounter your word and your way for us. Remind us that we can place our trust in your eternal love. Enable us to be more effective in our witness to that love by word and deed. Guide our steps and pick us up when we falter. Dust us off and place us on the pathways of grace and service. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. New Beginnings family, let me take this opportunity to greet all of our August celebrants. For birthdays, we have Flora Mallet, Lori Brewer, Kent Paxton, Vic DeMagno, Janet Hunt, Valeria Palacios, Ian Kowalski, Sarah Sombrano, Sylvia Henry, Kyle Hunt, Bert Wark, Elena Clark, Dorothy Smith, Jane Croyle, Matthew Good, Abigail Lindsay, David Bancroft, Kathy Oswald, Kelsey Sorensen, Bob Villanueva, Chuck Denton, Bill McCollman, June McKenzie, Wilma Alabang, Donna Fraley, Tommy Garcia, Edwin Teofilo, Pasita Del Amen, Donna Kunsalan, Tavita Tacunga Jr., and Linda Toft. For anniversaries, Bruce and Teresa Forden, and Tom and June McKenzie. To all of you, blessings from your new beginnings family. Let us now prepare our hearts for prayer as we sing, Near to the Heart of God. God of love and mercy, be with us this day. We have faltered in our service to you. We create divisions between various people. We judge before we listen. We condemn before we make any attempt to understand. Our lives are in turmoil and we confess that we have turned away from you. O Lord, it is fear and anger that too often surrounds us and our actions become based on those fears and anger. O Lord, slow us down. Give us hearts overflowing with grace and compassion. Help us, O God, to mirror Jesus, who loved and healed others who were rejected by polite society. Remind us that we are called to be strong voices of hope for those who feel alienated and lost, we are called to be a home to strangers, to quench thirst, and to give nourishment, to welcome and bring words of hope. Forgive us when we have forgotten these things, O oh God. For we pray all of this in the name of our Lord and of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and who taught us to pray by saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning's scripture is from Matthew chapter 16, verses 15 through 24. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo a great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Thank you. 
Will you bow your hearts with me as we come to God in prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be made acceptable in thy sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, Redeemer, and Friend. Amen. I don't know about you, but names are significant. They mean something, for they are identifying markers for people. If you don't know someone's name, then you won't ever be able to call on them or to them. Normally people have a first and a last name. Some people change their birth names for many reasons. This wouldn't happen if names weren't significant and didn't matter. But they do matter. Names say something about who we are. The politics of naming is also important. What you are called and who gets to name you, these things set your place in the world and sometimes set you apart. For example, I'm not sure if uh, many of you know my full name. For many of you, you know me as Neil Platon or Pastor Neil. However, my real name is Antonio Neil Platon III. My parents choose to name me Antonio to honor my grandfather, Antonio Platon Sr. My dad was Antonio Platon Jr., so I became the third Antonio Platon. As with most Filipinos, I too have two first names, Antonio Neil. My parents gave me my second name, Neil, because I was born during the moon landing of 1969 in honor of one of the astronauts of Apollo 11, Neil Armstrong. So as you can see, names are significant, and they serve as identifying markers for people that say something about who they are. In our Gospel reading this morning, we will be looking at one of the most important names in the Bible, Jesus. Today, we will try to understand why His name is important to us Christians and in our discipleship life. Our passage begins with Jesus asking His disciples the question, But who do you say that I am? Though this question is posted to Jesus' disciples, it is a powerful question for us as well today. Who do we say that Jesus is? And the question is even more resounding if we embrace the fullness of what it means to speak or say in this context. It just may be that the lives we lead in light of our hopes in the Messiah are just as critical as that which we confess with words, no matter how true or elegant that is, as we answer this life-altering question, the shape of our lives may be as important as the words of our lips. The question of identity is at the center of our reading today. In all of narrative accounts and explicit identifications, the Gospels weave a number of portraits about Jesus. And in doing so, however, the gospel writers are not just interested in correctly defining who Jesus is, but also in shaping a community molded in light of his actions and his teachings. And so these questions of identity are not just a matter of definition, but of formation. 
not just of doctrine, but also of discipleship. In this week's pericope, these questions of Jesus' identity are stated as sharply as any other account of Jesus' ministry. Gathered in Caesarea Philippi, Jesus wonders aloud what the crowds are saying about him, but more importantly, what the disciples think. It's another way of saying, why are you following me? And why have you left everything you know? Who do you say that I am? And so it might be worthwhile to ask the faithful today as a similar question. Why are you here? Why have you chosen to follow this Galilean peasant? Why are you on this path? The thing though is, we cannot answer these questions until we fully answer the question, what does it mean to call Jesus the Messiah in the context such as ours? I'm sure I'm not the only one who is sensing this difficulty of answering this question, which has the potential to make such a bold confession to the world, thus making obvious the clear disconnect between our public confession and our everyday actions. I think most of us are aware that there is a gap between the words that we say on Sunday and the lives that we lead the rest of the week not intentionally and certainly with no malice afterthought. In fact, I suspect that most of us would like the words we say on Sunday not just to align with the rest of our lives, but actually to matter day in and day out. So who do you say Jesus is? Not just say when repeating the creed, but say with our lives. That is, with our relationships, our finances, our time, our energy, and all the rest. Who do we really say that Jesus is? However, please don't think that my message today is about putting a big guilt trip on all of us as we try to answer the question, are we living lives that confess Jesus as Lord? Actually, I want us to wonder together for a moment or two what we actually mean when we say with Peter that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, or that Jesus is Lord. Honestly, I think that it's really hard to align our lives with our confession when we don't really understand what that confession means. And I'm not sure most of us really do, I mean myself included, and I even went to seminary. However, we can take some comfort, I think, that Peter didn't understand what he said either. And that's okay, because this, whatever it is that Jesus was and is, it's really hard to put into words that we can understand. And so we come up with titles and formulations and all the rest, trying to get the mystery of what God has done in and through Jesus Christ, and that's understandable. But all too often, I fear that those words only keep the wild and unpredictable God of love and grace at arm's length from us, and Jesus remains inspiring and exemplary, but ultimately rather tame and imminently safe, kind of like the prophets of old seem to us. So how do we do it? Maybe we can start by describing Jesus to someone who has never heard of him before, perhaps to a child or adult or friend or stranger who happened to ask you about Jesus. And then when you've given some thought to that, and when you found words that even if they still don't feel adequate, are at least concrete and reasonably clear, share that confession with the other person. I know that that can be a little scary, so let me start. 
Maybe you can follow along after I do this. For me, I think that Jesus is God's way of showing us how much God loves us and all people. God is so big that I think we have a hard time connecting with God. And so God came to be like one of us, to live like one of us, in order to reveal just how God feels about us human beings. In this sense, Jesus revealed God's heart, a heart that aches with all who suffer depression and think seriously about ending their lives, a heart that is upset and angry when a young black man is shot dead for no explicable reason, a heart that is torn up in grief at the desperate situation and violence that rips apart the communities that we live in, a heart that loves us like only an adoring parent can, and so not only wants the best for us, but is always eager to welcome us home in grace, forgiveness, and love. But it's more than that too, I think. Jesus also came to show us what is possible. And so rather than give in to the threat of disease, our Lord Jesus healed the sick. Rather than surrender people to demons, Jesus showed compassion to the least of these. Rather than let people starve because there's not enough to go around, Jesus fed the people who were hungry. Jesus refused to be satisfied or limited by the status quo and invites us to do the same. Because if Jesus' life and death show us how much God loves us, Jesus' resurrection shows us that that love is more powerful than hate and fear and even death. Jesus shows us, in short, that God's love wins. Yes, God's love wins. So there it is. Not perfect. There should probably be more on this, you know, about God's forgiveness and so forth, and shaped by some of what's going on in the world today. So that is what it means, at least for me to understand Jesus as the Messiah. It is to look at our lives, our time, our relationships, our hopes and dreams, finances and all the rest, through the lens of both the power and possibilities created by seeing God's heart laid bare in the life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. So today, my dear friends, I invite you to ask yourself what it means for Jesus to be the Messiah or the Lord of your life. Maybe you can come up with a sentence or two that describes what you believe about our Lord and then ask yourself to let that confession take root or take shape in your life more fully this week. Because the thing is, I don't think Jesus asks us to confess who we believe he is for his sake, but rather for ours, that we might be caught up and be embraced by the power of God's love and life. That the confessions that we offer about Jesus during church and in our lives aren't finally words of praise to God, but rather are words of power that might help us root us in the love and the possibility that our Lord Jesus Christ offers. May it be so as we continue with our life together and with our God. Amen.
New Beginnings family, here are our announcements for the week of August the 30th. We hope you've been receiving our church updates uh, through our phone message and email blast. If you don't, please call us at 909-515-5770 or email us at newbeginnings.mbie at gmail.com. We also would like to inform you that Pastor Raphael continues to receive weekly food donations. If you know of individuals or families who are in need of food, you can email him at rderas.nbie at gmail.com. We continue to have our weekly studies during the week. Don Leifer leads us on Tuesday evenings with What's in Your Hymnal and Yours Truly on Friday nights. Both are at 7 o'clock. Please check our website at nbie.org for more details. This week, our preschool at Highland has reopened. We continue to ask for your prayers for Rosemary Peterson and the rest of her preschool staff and our children for a successful and healthy school year. We also would like to know that our church receives subscription to the upper rooms. If you would like to receive the September, October edition of these devotionals, please call our church office and I will be more than happy to deliver these devotionals to you. We are still in need of greeters for our morning worship. If you'd like to send your videos, send those to Fernando at FernandoWestry at gmail.com. We thank you so much for all of your support to the church. If you would like to give financially to the church, you can go to our website at nbie.org and click on the giving tab. You can also write your checks payable to New Beginnings United Methodist Church and send it to our downtown campus. You can also give through text. Here's now a short video on how to text to give. Again, we'd like to thank all of you for all of your support to the church, and may God continue to bless each and every one of you. O oh God, we have sorted your face in worship today. We ask that your peace will abide in our hearts, and we will continue to experience your peace that surpasses all understanding. Bless us, O oh God, as we go forth, and let your light shine in our lives forever. Friends, Jesus has called you and placed his trust in you. Go into the world bearing the words of hope and healing. Reach out to others in compassion, for it is in Jesus' name that you're sent out to serve. Go in peace, my dear friends, and until we meet again, in Christ's name we pray.